control the inmate. And black is just a continuation of the same thing we've been going through on the street. George Jackson was born in Chicago in 1941, one of five children in a poor working class family. His mother, Georgia, was afraid of what the streets could do to him. She wouldn't let him go out and play. She kept him on the roof. You know, she wouldn't let him go out because she didn't want him to get in trouble. I used to tell them that they were black. And in order to achieve, they'd have to be twice as good as white. I said, if you're twice as good as a white in school, then maybe you'll make something. Yes, that's what I used to tell them. It was the truth. So why hide it from them? As a young boy at Catholic school, Jackson experienced racism. The playground was for white kids only. Growing up in the projects, he became involved in petty crime, fighting, stealing. At age 15, his parents moved to L.A. and they settled in the Watts District, where he began to be involved in a little bit more serious crime, stealing a motorbike, breaking and entering. In 1958, he was convicted of a store burglary uh, and sent to CYA, California Youth Authority camp, for several months. He escaped, fled back to Chicago, was involved in a knifing, came back to California in chains. After spending time locked up in the California Youth Authority, Jackson graduated to state prison when he pled guilty to the robbery of a Bakersfield gas station. It was 1961. Jackson was 19 years old, and he received the indeterminate sentence of one year to life. Well, I was incarcerated under a one to life. A term that called for one to life, where I could have done one year and been released. I've done 10. That's more time than anybody in the state has ever done on a one to life. According to fellow inmate James Carr, when the two became leaders of a gang known as the Wolf Pack, much of her time was spent in the usual convict hustles, gambling, booze, sex, blackmail. He knew how to play the game, he was a tough guy, he studied martial arts, he was, you know, strong, very muscular, very smart, very cunning guy. Good behavior dictated Jackson's chance for parole. It became non-existent. Prison records indicate that he received over 40 disciplinary actions. Jackson spent seven years in solitary. He was a big guy, he was a tough guy. He was, he was a predator when he was in the general population. He, he was a predator of other inmates. He, he, he just abused people. He became a professional uh, prisoner, uh, a real dyed-in-the-wool con convict. And then he started reading um, revolutionary theory. Then he, be, he started reading Marx and Lenin and Mao. And he wrote, I read Marx and Lenin and Mao and they redeemed me. All of a sudden, he had a context for his anger. He realized, you know, why he was there, why people of his, of his race, of his um, working class background, why they were in prison in disproportionate numbers. And that was the appeal of George Jackson. He represented in the most, in the highest way, uh, the injustice of the system and the cruelty and the institutionalized racism of the system. Coming up on Day of the Gun, inmate killings at Soledad Prison begins a chain of revenge and murder. I'm a Ford truck man, that's all I drive. I ain't got no boundaries, I don't compromise. Save on Ford SUVs during truck month. Get 0% financing for 60 months or up to 3,500 cash.